Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and today we're going to be going over the best mid laners for every elo. The champions in league are not a one size fits all. You get vastly different results depending on the skill bracket you're in. For example, let's look at worlds. Azir and Silas were the two highest presence champions in the mid lane and had a huge impact most games they were picked. Silas in particular was really scary with a 66% win rate. But in solo queue, things are a lot different. Every little fanboy out there wants to be Zekka right now. Silas is the most picked champion in mid lane for patch 1221, but his win rate is a measly 49%. The thing is, Silas is just way too hard for the average player to use right. I mean, even in Diamond, his win rate is still in the red. He may seem like a broken champion, but you have to have good mechanics to combo with him properly. You also have to have good matchup knowledge, know how and when to use which enemy ultimate, and to make it even more complicated, you sort of need a team that can play around which ultimates you have available. The end result is a champion that is objectively super broken, having an extremely weak showing to the point that it's grief to lock him in. That's just one example, but in short, the things that make a champion bad in solo queue tend to come down to two things. Either the champion is too mechanically hard for the average player in that rank, or the champion needs a team to play around it, which basically is never a good thing, even in high elo. That's why Aphelios has such a pathetic showing, even in challenger elo. So then what does it take for a champion to be good? The mechanical skill lining up definitely matters to a large extent, but there's also one thing to consider that a lot of people probably don't realize. Everyone knows that League has a general meta to it, depending on the overall state of the game. If enchanters are OP, then hyper carries are probably OP. If those bot laners are OP, then assassins tend to be weak, and tanks tend to be strong since they can frontline for those hyper carries. But a less thought about concept is that different skill levels also have their own meta. For example, split pushing is generally a pretty reliable tactic in solo queue, but it's especially good in lower ranks, where players are even less coordinated. It's very easy for a champion to snowball fast in a side lane and take over the game. Fiora is an overpowered split pusher, but if we're talking about low elo, she's a bit too mechanically intensive, so we would say someone like Yorick or Trindamir would be much better at those ranks. Before we get to the main course for today, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24 7 just waiting to share everything they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over for some professional help now. Moving on to our picks for the best mid laners in each elo, we'll of course be starting out in iron. To be blunt, if you're playing in iron, it's definitely best to go for champions that are easy to execute to get consistent results. If you're playing champions that are risky and or have hard to execute combos, Odds are, your results are inconsistent at best. Our pick for this rank is Garen. I know Garen is traditionally a top laner, but he's such a ridiculously overtuned champion that he works super well in the mid lane too. He literally doesn't have any bad matchups. Against any melee champion, you just stomp. If they move into CS, you punish them hard. Against ranged champions, you quickly clear the wave with his E, using W to shrug off their damage and then sustain through their poke with Doran's shield, second wind and his passive. If a ranged champion ever allows you to close the gap, you can take a really good trade and often just 100 to 0 them if you have your ultimate and ignite up. If your lane opponent is playing too safe for you to do much against them, then it's their team that ends up paying. You can either go for a roam to a side lane or look to invade the enemy jungle. You'd be surprised how often you can pick up a free double buff just by catching the opposing jungler off guard. What makes Garen such a good pick for solo queue at all ranks is that he doesn't really fall off. Back in the day, people would say he did, but that's because he was built a lot tankier back then, so his damage did become a lot less impactful as the game went on. Nowadays, you usually have a full damage build with a dead man's play just for the movement speed, so you're basically a tanky assassin all the way to the game's end. Next up, for bronze, we'll be talking about Set. While their kits don't really sound anything alike, in terms of how they play out the lane, Set and Garen are very similar. Set is also a super punishing pick against melee champions, easily dumpstering any assassin that ever tries to trade against you. And just like Garen, you're able to sustain through the ranged foes super easily, and if they slip up, you can easily punish them with a quick combo. 
That said, you won't really look to roam as much as Garen since Set doesn't have nearly as good of gap closing. Instead, if your laner isn't giving you much action and your jungler doesn't need you nearby, just take the time to reset and come back to lane. Set is definitely more of a scaling oriented pick. He really comes online once you have about two items and the game reaches the point where team fights start to break out. Out of all the juggernauts in the game, Set is one of the best for 5v5ing because he can be both a tank and massive damage dealer at the same time. In fact, it's taking damage that makes him such a big threat in fights. We've all seen those videos of a Set with a pure HP build absolutely one-shotting squishies that get caught in his W sweet spot. Taking things up to the next level, Mordekaiser is our pick for the best mid laner in silver. That makes us 3 for 3 on Juggernaut so far. As with our other two picks, Mord has the tools for dealing with any matchup. When you're playing Mordekaiser, you have a big focus on scaling up. He can certainly take some good trades, but he's not quite as able to force as our last two picks. Your main goal is to farm up to level 6. Once you have that, you're able to do quite a bit more. Specifically, you want to get your team to move into the river and start setting up for Dragon. When you're just sitting mid, even if you're ult your foe, they're probably still able to get back to their turret since the lane is so short. But in a river fight, your target has nowhere to run and that usually means you have enough to bring them down and go on to win the team fight with a numbers advantage. Also, one pro tip for Mordekaiser is that you don't always have to target a squishy carry. So many mords tunnel on getting a free kill on the AD carry or support, but a lot of times it can help to take out a strong frontliner or a champion that's diving onto your own carries. You'll still be able to easily win the 1v1 in your ultimate and your team will have a much better chance in their fight outside of your realm as well. As you move up in rank, the more reliable your teammates become. It's still solo queue, so take that with a grain of salt, but it definitely changes up how well you can use champions that rely on roaming to win games. That said, the pick we have for gold is Singed. Singed mid has been one of the most broken things in the game for a couple of years now, and Riot's nerfs earlier this season didn't do much to change that. He's just too good at pressuring the map. You shove waves with his poison, roam to help your jungler or gank other lanes, rinse and repeat. He's also an incredibly strong skirmisher and team fighter once you have his ultimate, so you should be able to carry fights for early dragons, getting your team set up for an early soul. Now for Platinum, our pick for best mid laner is Pantheon. Plat is the elo where you can really start relying more heavily on junglers working with you when you pick a strong early laner, and that's what makes Pantheon so broken here. Again, a bit of a grain of salt statement, but in general, if you tell a jungler that you can set them up for a free kill, they'll be willing to come to your lane so you can both start snowballing. Pantheon is truly a champion that can take an inch and turn it into a mile, so once you get that early lead, you want to use it to crush the rest of the map. The second you hit 6, you should be looking for a chance to ultimate to either of your side lanes. Pantheon technically does fall off at super late game, but he snowballs so hard early and spikes so hard in the mid game that you should be able to close out most games before you reach that point. If it does drag on, do your best to stick to side lanes and play for picks on squishies in rotation. Next up, the champion that we think is the best mid laner in the game for diamond players is Heimerdinger. This spot was a tough one to decide. Tristana gives you a snowbally lane bully that goes on to be a hyper carry, and Swain is one of the best team fighters in the game once you make it past two items. But we went with Heimer because he's just so consistent. No matter the matchup, he pretty much always dominates lane. The constant shoving power of his turrets, along with the poke from his rockets, allows you to bully anyone, ranged or melee. Against a laner with so much wave control and poke, most other champions would be forced to go for an all-in, but as long as Heimer holds his grenade for defensive use, that's impossible too. Of course, just being good early isn't enough to make a champion broken in the upper elos. He also scales well with insane teamfight damage output with an ultimate turret or the potential to land huge AoE crowd control with an ulted grenade. Due to a lack of sample size, it can be hard to look at what the best picks are for Challenger and even Grandmaster. So instead of looking at all three of the top ranks separately, we'll be lumping them all together in a category that we'll call Masters Plus. The champion that we consider the absolute very best pick for this rank bracket is Talon. No matter the meta, Talon is always a very broken pick at the very tippity top of the ladder. For one, players here are obviously going to generally have super good mechanics, so they can execute the quick combos that one-shot squishy carries with basically no counterplay. 
But the bigger thing is, is his roaming. Like I said before, the higher up you go, the more you can rely on a team that can work with you when you pick champions that are active on the map early on. And no champion moves around quite like Talon. As early as level 3, you can see Talon one tricks roaming across the map, picking up a kill or two and getting back mid without missing much XP. This quickly leads to him snowballing out of control, and before you know it, he's 7-0 and laning phase isn't even over. Like many assassins, he does fall off later in the game, but in high elo, you can usually expect teams to know how to reliably close out a game with such a big lead pretty quickly. And that about wraps things up for the best mid laners in every elo. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Now that we've reached the end, comment your rank and what you main down in the comment section below. Maybe it's time for you to reconsider what you're putting all your time into. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next one, but until then, good luck on the rift, and may the LP God smile down upon you.